Well, good evening. Good to get together tonight. Just uh, two announcements to share tonight. Um, the first is that this is our, our second to the last Lenten Wednesday. So tonight, Gary Hands is going to be speaking about Pontius Pilate. And then next week, Dave Post is going to be speaking about Peter. And so next week, we're going to be at Good Hope at 7 o'clock. And uh, the other announcement is that the men of uh, Good Hope are hosting a dinner and that is on Sunday, and serving starts at, uh-oh, uh can't remember, 11.30, 11.30 to 1, and that's on Sunday at Good Hope, and then uh, if you want to come and help, you can start peeling potatoes at 1 o'clock on Saturday, and um, I've been told there are people who actually know how to run that potato masher, so um, yeah, but come on by on Sunday um, for dinner. Not too sure of too many other announcements to share. Um, turn us over to Daryl, who's going to lead us, and Gary's going to share the word with us tonight. Christ, light of life, shine on your people here. Stay with us now, put fear to flight as evening ushers in the night. Warm the darkness with your love and light. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, light of life, shine on your people here. Jesus Christ, light of life, shine in your people here. Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ, of the Father given, light to earth from light of heaven, holy endless source. Of life as we come to the setting of the sun and we look to the gold of evening light we will raise our songs in the praise of your glory and with all the universe unite Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ, of the Father given, light to earth from light of heaven, holy endless source of life as we sing O holy three in one font of life and love and fire divine we rejoice in you with the pure voice of gladness as we let your light within us shine Joyous light of glory, sacred word made human story, blessed Jesus Christ, <clears throat> given light to earth from light of heaven, holy endless source of life. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you have enlightened us by revealing the light that never fades. Night is falling, and day's allotted span draws to a close. The daylight you created for our pleasure has fully satisfied us, and yet, of your free gift, now the evening lights do not fail us. We praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom be glory, honor, and power to you in the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we lift our hands in prayer like incense rising and offer our lives to you, O God. God, we call for you are near. Hear us and help us. Be now among us here. Hear us and help us. Be thou the loving ear, hear us and help us, and all who cry. We lift our hands in prayer, like incense rising, and offer our lives to you, O God. Touch our lips, form every word, keep us from evil, unbind our hearts, O Lord, hear us from evil, remind us we are restored, keep us from evil, and all its lies, we lift our hands in prayer like incense rising and offer our lives to you O God as we turn our gaze to you light of creation and live our days with you light of creation and burn and blaze in you light of creation open our eyes we lift our hands in prayer like incense rising and offer our lives to you O God. <laughs> Let us pray. O God, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is worthy of all praise. Let our prayer rise before you as incense and with the lifting up of our hands. May we offer our whole lives to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from John chapter 18, verses 33 to 38. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, 
my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 15 through 26. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The word of the Lord. Good evening. Good evening. I am Pontius Pilate. I was the governor of Judea from the years 26 through 36 of the Common Era. I was appointed governor under the Emperor Tiberius. I was appointed through his, the intervention of Sejanus, who was one of his favorites. I was protected by Sejanus. I could pretty much do whatever I wanted to. He had my back until the year 31 CE when Sejanus was convicted of trying to overthrow Tiberius. I took money from the Jewish treasury to build an aqueduct. I tried to put images of Caesar in the Jewish temples and synagogues. I tried to make them use money, coins with pagan images on them. But the thing I am most known for is the trial and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It was a strange and surreal event. Not that I was in any way bothered with Jesus being crucified. I have sent more people to the cross than I can count. It was just that most of the people that I crucify are criminals, someone who I am worried about, someone who I feel better off if, if, if I'm rid of them or they might pose a threat to Rome. But I could find nothing wrong with this Jesus fellow. No reason really to condemn him to death. But the Jewish leaders were insistent. I tried everything I could think of to get out of it. I sent him to Herod, passed the buck to him. I offered to release Jesus and crucify Barabbas but the people chose to release Barabbas instead and crucify Jesus. I had him beaten and whipped, hoping that would satisfy their bloodlust. My wife even warned me to stay out of it. But in the end, if finding Jesus innocent was going to cause a revolt, cause me trouble, well, what was the crucifixion of one man 
if it meant keeping the peace, keeping me in power. No big deal to me, just one more guy going to the cross. Then some strange things happened. The Jewish leaders wanted me to post a guard over Jesus' tomb, claiming that he had said he was going to rise from the dead. That was ridiculous. This Jesus was as dead as a tree he was nailed to. No way he was going to walk out of that tomb. But I posted the guard anyway. And then a few days later, the guard reported that Jesus was alive. How could that be? Maybe there really was something to this Jesus fellow. Maybe he really was a god. I was afraid for a while that maybe Jesus would come after me seeking revenge. But nothing ever happened. I never saw him again. I guess I will always be known as the man who crucified Jesus. I can only hope that the words he said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, applies to me also. I took a few liberties portraying Pilate this evening, trying to get in his head a little bit, because the truth of the matter is, really not much is known about him. What's written in the scriptures, and a very little bit in the secular works. And they differ quite, quite a bit. The Bible really portrays Pilate as kind of a weak, swayable leader, more concerned with public opinion, trying to avoid making the decision where the secular writing about him paints him as a pretty bloodthirsty, violent man, ruling with an iron fist, using the cross as a threat, as power to keep people in line. In fact, in 36 of the Common Era, the end of his reign, Pilate violently suppressed a group of Samaritans gathered. He thought they were posing a problem being insurrectionist. He was so violent, so bloodthirsty with his putting them down that complaints were made, and Pilate was called back to Rome to face charges. One of the charges against him was crucifying Roman citizens without giving them a fair trial. And that pretty much is where the story ends. He gets back to Rome and not much else is said about him. One tradition says that Pilate committed suicide, maybe at the force or the insistence of the rulers there. Another says that he and his wife converted to Christianity. Whatever ended up happening, the truth of the matter is, is that Pilate, through his actions, or lack of, will always be known as the guy who crucified Jesus. When Pastor gave us this assignment, one of the questions he asked was, where is the good news of this story? I thought long and hard about that. Where is the good news? Is there any good news? This is a story about betrayal, about passing the buck, promoting yourself through someone else's expense, using someone else to promote yourself. At the, it's about torture. It's about murder. It's about crucifixion all in the name of religion. The absolute worst of humanity, all in the name of God. Is there any good news here? Some might say the good news is that Jesus had to die for our sins. Jesus had to die so that God could forgive us to earn our salvation. I would like to challenge that thought tonight. Why did Jesus have to die so that we could be forgiven? Jesus was forgiving people long before he went to the cross. Our Lutheran theology states that there is nothing we can do to earn our salvation, but only through the grace of God can we be saved, be forgiven. So why do we think that someone had to die before God could forgive us? God is God. He can do whatever he wants to. I think sometimes we promote the idea that Jesus had to die to absolve ourselves of any blame. We can wash our hands of the whole incident, just like Pilate did. It wasn't my fault Jesus died on a cross. Pilate crucified Jesus. It was those Jewish leaders, the Jewish crowd, who cried, crucify him. 
we can even blame God. It was God's plan. It was God's fault that Jesus had to be crucified. The fact of the matter is that we, you and I, crucified Jesus. What was it Jesus said? Whatever you do to the least of those among you, you do to me. With our thoughts, words, and actions, or lack of actions, we crucify Jesus every day. I don't think Jesus had to die on that cross. I think Jesus was willing. Jesus was willing to die on that cross. Let's be honest, Jesus could have walked away from that situation anytime he wanted to. He had much as told Pilate the same thing. I could call my angels, call my followers. We'd be out of here in a minute. Jesus wouldn't even need his followers. He could have walked through that crowd. He could have struck down anyone who tried to stop him. He could have took it a step further. He could have forced them to get down on their knees to praise him as king, as son of God. He could have made them do the right thing. He could have treated them and us as his puppets, pulling the strings so to make us do his will every day. Think how much better this world would be if he forced us to do the right thing every day, if he forced us to do his will. Isn't that really what we pray about often? When we pray about peace in the Middle East, when we pray about the end of the war between Ukraine and in Russia, aren't we really saying, God, make them do the right thing? But God doesn't control us. He doesn't manipulate us. He doesn't pull our strings to force us to do his will. Because that's not what love is. Love is respect and giving free will. Free will to make our own decisions to chart our own path, to choose which road we will follow. And not only does he give us free will, but he is willing to pay the consequences for our actions, for our decisions. We can love him, we can follow him, we can hang him on a cross. And he willingly goes to the cross, paying the consequences for our actions. That's pretty incredible when you think about it that way. But what's even more amazing is he knows we are going to make the wrong choices, wrong decisions. And he still gives us that free will. And he is still willing to pay the price for our decisions. But the most incredible thing is after we make the wrong choice, after we nail him to the cross, after he suffers and dies on the cross, he still loves us, still has compassion for us, he still forgives us. Who does that? Seriously, who does that in this world of eye for an eye, of revenge, of getting even, of get mine before you get yours? Who suffers and dies on the cross? and then forgives the people that put him there. Our God does. That's who. What an incredible, amazing, loving God we have. Amen.
my soul proclaims your greatness, O God. My spirit rejoices in the love of my Savior. You have looked with favor on my simple ways, and I will praise you all of my days. You have called me blessed, done great things for me. You have shown your mercy, set my spirit free. You have lifted the lowly, sent the rich away. You have filled the hungry, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God. My spirit rejoices in the love of my Savior. You have looked with favor on my simple ways. And I will praise you all of my days. You have humbled the mighty, scattered earthly pride. You have strengthened your servants, kept us by your side. You have honored your promise made so long ago. You have blessed your children and age to age and so. My soul proclaims your greatness, O oh God. My spirit rejoices in the love of my Savior. You have looked with favor on my simple ways. And I will praise you all of my days. <clears throat> God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayers. For peace born of heaven and for our salvation, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For peace in the whole world and peace among all peoples, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For all those who govern, give wisdom and compassion, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For all who work for justice and freedom from oppression, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For rain, sun, and harvest, and food to fill the hungry, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For all who know affliction, despair, wrath, and danger, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. For all those who suffer in grief, pain, and sorrow, we pray to you, 
family, friends, and neighbors, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy, and listen to our prayer. Rejoicing in communion with saints gone before us, we pray to you, O God of love, have mercy and listen to our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you that you have kept us under your protecting care in the day that is past. Bring your healing to the wounds of this day, those we have inflicted, those we have felt, those that trouble our world. Cover us this night with the wings of your grace and raise us to a new day with Christ our light and our peace. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Let us bless the Holy One, to God our thanks we raise. May God Almighty bless us, guide us and defend us, and lead us into life. Amen.